Hey guys, welcome to the Hobby Room and welcome to RC Helicopters 101. Simulators, basic controls, and hover training. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Chris Rybert. I got into the hobby back in 1986. I was six years old when my grandfather and father got me into it. Started with airplanes and I got into helicopters in the mid 90s. I uh, haven't looked back ever since, been having a blast with them. Um, I've been working in the helicopter community since 2012 as a uh, sponsored pilot, doing reviews, builds, giving back to the community, and helping people. That's why I wanted to kind of make this video for you know guys on the internet and guys in my club who are really thinking about dabbling into the helicopter side of our hobby. So first off guys, let's talk about simulators. Alright guys, so the number one biggest factor when it comes to flying model helicopters is probably fear. Fear of loss, fear of money, fear of crashing, fear of failure. What can relieve some of that fear is a good simulator. There's a great simulators on the market today. AccuRC, Real Flight, Next, just to name a few. Personally, I use Next RC uh, Flight Simulator when I sim. What's cool about it is you can download a demo for free, use your own transmitter if you like it, you just buy the licensing code to have the full uh, simulator. Now it caters to 95% helicopters with a couple airplanes, but I really like it. Having a simulator will give you that muscle memory your brain and fingers need to get used to flying a model helicopter. So I definitely recommend the sim. I've used it a ton growing up. It saved me thousands and thousands of dollars. If I'm trying to new maneuver, I try to do it on a sim before I take it out in real life. Okay guys, buying your first model helicopter. What should I buy? Where should I go? I still, guys, recommend buying something small and cheap. Um, I picked this up at my local hobby shop. I want to start playing with it, and I recommend the guys in the club to get it. This is a Blade 70S. Now, what's great about this helicopter is if you're just not sure if you want to get in the hobby and you're looking to get your feet wet, this is a ready-to-fly helicopter for $60. So in the box here, got the instruction manual, the little micro helicopter, a spare blades, battery for the transmitter, a little USB charger, and a battery. And you have a little transmitter here with the same controls as a full-size helicopter. So why do I recommend a little micro helicopter? Is they're cheap, you can fly them indoors in the winter, you can fly them inside and practice when it's raining out, and you don't have to worry about crazy crash costs. You know, you're flying this around, one, two, three feet up in the air, you get scared, chop the throttle, let it hit the ground, go over, pick it back up. The other biggest thing that I'm blown away this offers for $60 is the safe technology, which is self-leveling. So if you're flying around and you're in trouble, just let go, this helicopter will self-level. So learning to fly helicopters, having something with safe technology, bailout rescue, is huge. That also takes a lot of fear out of flying. Okay guys, so next I want to go into transmitter handling and then we'll go into the actual stick inputs and what they do. So there's a few different ways you can hold a transmitter. Growing up I used to thumb. Probably until the 2000s when I really started getting into 3D flying with my helicopters. I wanted more control to help me with my precision and smoother flying. So a lot of guys will thumb like this and use their you know, fingers to manipulate all the switches up here. Other guys will pinch where they're actually pinching the sticks like this. I prefer being a hybrid. I actually I kind of thumb, but my pointer fingers are on the sticks, adding some you know, extra control. And I use all these fingers up here for hitting my switches. Some guys will also fly with a neck strap or a transmitter tray. Personally, I do the hybrid pinch thumb, and I just rest the, the transmitter on my fingers. It doesn't matter how you hold it, what fingers you use, as long as you feel comfortable holding a radio. Though, what I do highly recommend is don't change your switch position and how you hold your transmitter. I've seen guys, you know, fly airplanes with their thumbs and they pinch helicopters. No. However you manipulate this radio, whether you're on a simulator, airplanes, gliders, helicopters, hold it the same way for all those models, guys, because your brain is trying to learn muscle memory with what your fingers are doing. And if you're constantly changing how you grip and hold that transmitter for different models and aircraft, you're never going to get this done right. They'll, they'll improve your flying just right there. Not changing up and finding one way, that's huge. All right, so next we're going to talk about how to control the helicopter itself. 
Okay guys, I got my Synergy E5 here in my radio and I want to show you your main stick controls, what they all do. The stick on the left here is called your collective stick. As you move this stick up and down, if it's a collective pitch helicopter, you are actually increasing the blade pitch as well as the motor RPM. If this, this is a fixed pitch helicopter, you're simply just increasing the RPM. That pitch is fixed in that little helicopter like the Blade 70S from the factory at like an 8 degree pitch. So as you give it throttle, you're just increasing that rotor speed to go higher as you lower the throttle, it's just coming down. So this is gonna make your helicopter go up and down. The stick, same stick going left and right, is changing the pitch of your tail rotor blades and that will, that will give you your yaw. So that's making you, you know, yaw left, yaw right, just like the rudder on a helicopter, on, a, on an airplane. So, tail control, collective and throttle. So next, we have our cyclic control. You have your left, right, forward, backward cyclic. What cyclic is doing is those servos are moving and you're moving the inputs on a swash plate. That swash plate spins with the main rotor head and that's connected to your main grips. So what you're actually doing when you tilt the swash plate is you're actually tilting this main rotor disc. So, you know, if you want to go left, you tilt the, the cyclic stick left, that disc turns left and the helicopter banks left, turn it right, it's banking right, forward on a stick, that, that disc move, moves forward, if you want the helicopter to come back, you pull back on a stick. So those are your basic controls, cyclic on the right, throttle and yaw on the left. Now, if you have a typical driven helicopter with a tail, whether it's belt drive, torque tube, when you do that yaw, you're actually changing the pitch of the main blades to get them to push or pull the helicopter. If it's a small micro helicopter like the Blade 70S, it actually has a tail uh, mo motor in back. And what it's doing is it's start, starting and stopping and speeding itself up to compensate the anti-torque of uh, the main rotor system. Okay guys, next we're gonna talk about basic hover training where it all starts. So we've got a little micro helicopter, we've got a transmitter, we're charged up, we're all ready to fly. Where do we start? Do we just jam the throttle and try to get up in the air? No, always walk before you can run. I've seen so many guys get so excited to get these things up in the air and start flying them like airplanes and they can't be any more night and day from an airplane of how they fly. You've got to, you're constantly mixing all the controls just to get it to hover. So let's start off with basic hovering. So if you guys are looking at me, you're the pilot here. This is nose in hovering, tail in hovering, and then side in hovering. So I always recommend start with your tail in orientation because left is left, right is right, forward is forward, back is back. When you're side in or nose in, just like flying an airplane, everything is either reversed or different. So what I recommend for your first few you know, hours of flying, and again, you know, hovering can be boring, but that is a basic fundamentals to flying. If you can hover, we can move you into the next steps of flying. If you're ever in trouble with sport flying, I always tell people, immediately get to tail in and you're back to that safe point where you feel, where you feel safe. So, basic hovering. What I want you guys to do is get familiar with your yaw, your rudder stick, as well as your throttle. Most helicopters on spoop are gonna wanna kinda of anti-torque because of the torque of the main rotor head. So you're gonna to wanna to learn to compensate that. So, get the helicopter on the ground, plugged in. Go about quarter throttle. We want this helicopter light on the skids enough where we can skate around, but we don't want it taken off. Because once you're taken off, now you're flying, you're just freaking out, not knowing what to do. So, get your light on the skids about quarter stick. Start playing with your tail a little. See, you know, see what the tail control does. Do a full pirouette on the ground if you want. Get that tail in at you again. Once you feel comfortable holding it here with tail in with yourself, learn, start playing with your cyclic stick. So kind of give it a little bank angle and have it skate across the ground left. Go to the right, have it skate across the ground right. You know, pull back on the cyclic stick and have it slide back. Forward on a cyclic, have it go forward. And then start working your way in a box. See if you know you can skate around to all corners of a box, return to center, maybe throw you know pirouette in there. And once you've gotten that down, work on your nose in, skating left and right, forward, backwards. Siding, same thing, get those all down. Then once we've accomplished the ground skating and you feel really good about your yaw control and your cyclic inputs, give it a little bit more throttle and get this thing just to start hovering off the ground a little. Try to keep it still skating around the ground and ground effect, but try to keep it right there hovering. This is what I've been teaching 
uh, my kids to do on this little micro quad we, quad we have. We've been having to skate them around the ground, get, you know, go up a few inches, set it back down. So once you get more comfortable, you know, skating around the ground, we can go up into a hover. Still want you guys to do stationary hovers, so that's the base, basics of where you want to start. When you are hovering, you're getting used to this, try to be about a foot to maybe two, two and a half feet up. Because if you do get worried, you dump the throttle, you drop these little micros from a couple feet up, you just pick them back up and go fly again. Once I tell people, once you're chest level, you're committed, you're flying. And if it starts banking one way, then you gotta counteract with cyclic going the other way. But what's nice about this little helicopter is when you are flying it, it does have that self-leveling. So, you know, if you bank left and let go, it's gonna instantly level back out for you. So, work on hovering, guys. Hovering and simming, they can be boring at first, but those are the fundamentals to moving on to uh, bigger and better down the road, especially something like this. This is my Synergy E5. I've been flying this for three seasons now. I love it. This is my go-to helicopter. This is a 550 class helicopter swinging 556 millimeter rotor blades. This is a micro fixed pitch helicopter. This is where I started. We all have to start somewhere. And they're still a blast to fly. I mean, I rock this thing around the hobby room, around the living room, banging into walls, just having fun letting the kids fly it. So, that is basic hovering, guys. Get the fundamentals down. Get hovering, and we'll talk more in future videos. I just want to say thanks for watching. Remember, no matter how hard we practice and sim and fly, everybody learns at different levels. So don't be, you know, upset that you know Bob is learning faster than me, or you know I'm not excelling here. You gotta walk before you can run. I just didn't start flying my old helicopters. I had great guys in my club helping me along the way, giving me motivation, picking me back up when I just buried in. You know, a helicopter cost me $500. So it takes many, many hours and weeks and months and years to perfect. I'm still learning every day from guys out there, and I'm still trying to perfect my flying, make it cleaner, better, and teach myself new things. So with that being said, guys, there's nothing like flying a metal helicopter. Seeing this thing just float in midair and do these graceful maneuvers, it's badass. It's it's awesome, I, I just gotta say. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. You can see all my builds, reviews, pictures, videos, everything I do RC related at my website, www.3dandscalerchelicopters.com. Everything we've talked about today, I kind of typed it up. So if you look in the description of the video below, uh, you'll see the whole write up. So I know I didn't hit all the points. I just want to hit the, the basic points to kind of keep the video shorter. So read the article below, guys. Again, feel free to hit me up. Until next time, guys. Fly safe.